Hey folks, this is Riker with a gaming news wrap up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. This week's topics include the latest rumors and alleged leaks in the world of Diablo, the rocky start of the new Path of Exile League, publisher 2K defending microtransactions, and more. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the video description, and as we dive into things, make sure to ring the sub notification bell to be alerted of new Saturday episodes. Starting off with some quick news about Torchlight Frontiers. This upcoming game will be the third installment in the Torchlight action RPG series, and we have recently learned that Matt Ullman will be returning to compose the music. That is the very same Matt Ullman that did the music of Diablo 1, Diablo 2, Torchlight 1, Torchlight 2, and some World of Warcraft music. The music of Matt Ullman is iconic, and having him on board for Torchlight Frontiers is just another degree of reassurance to fans. On to the Netflix news about the coming Witcher series. We've known for a while that a series was coming based on the original Witcher novels rather than the video game adaptations. And the latest news is that the actor who will portray Geralt will be Henry Cavill of Superman fame. Now Henry Cavill is not the person that I think of <laughs> when I think of what actor would play a good Geralt. No criticism of Henry Cavill, he just I guess the, I, I have a hard time seeing him as someone other than the slick, clean-cut Superman. And I did recently see the latest Mission Impossible movie in which he had a gruff appearance, but I don't know, it still seems like a bizarre casting choice to me, but what do you folks think? On to some news about Travis Day. If you're wondering who that is, Travis Day spent 13 years at Blizzard, hired for World of Warcraft, moved on to the Diablo 3 team, and... He recently left in July of this year, and in the last few years, he was one of the biggest names, one of the public faces of Diablo 3. He was a lead designer. At the time of his leaving in July, it was not clear where he was headed next, but he recently announced, quote, I'm excited to announce that I will be joining Phoenix Labs, the makers of Dauntless. And in case you're unaware, Dauntless is an upcoming free-to-play MMORPG that's similar to Monster Hunter. And on the topic of former Blizzard developers, we learned this week that Carbine Studios is shutting down. Carbine Studios, the developers of the science fantasy MMORPG Wildstar, which was founded in 2005 by 17 former members of the World of Warcraft team and eventually brought on former members of the StarCraft and Diablo 2 teams. Well, as reported by Kotaku, the studio is shutting down 50 people or more will be losing their jobs, and the game Wildstar will be shutting down as well. Now, a year or two ago, I created a video showing the history of all the game studios that were formed from former Blizzard employees. And if you haven't checked that out, I encourage you to check that out. Carbine Studios was on my, my timeline infographic there. We'll have the pop-up uh, right about there. All right, on to a story about publisher... 2K, and senior producer Rob Jones on the upcoming NBA 2K19 game. Trusted Reviews interviewed Rob Jones, and in their article they were mentioning how in-game currency was a subject of fan complaints last year, because this is a re yearly recurring series. Mentioned that fans felt that the grind was too long, it was hindering the game's progression. And when he was asked about this, Rob Jones replied, saying, quote, Virtual currency is an unfortunate reality of modern gaming. Every game at some point in some way has currency and they're trying to get additional revenue from each player that plays the game. You know, the question has to be, when does it feel like it's a straight money grab versus when does it feel like it's value added, right? We know nowadays that most people don't have the patience to work their way to the top. They just want to be there right away. So, you know, we look at it as, oh, it's an opportunity for us to allow you to skip the grind. But then if the grind is too long, like some people felt last year, they're going to sit there and they're going to go, well, you knew the grind was too long to begin with. Well, doesn't that just warm the heart? It's real value added when you let the player skip the grind that you've put in so that they could be incentivized to skip it by paying. Great value. Now let's note that this is the same company that asked its Belgian fans to basically ask their government to pretty please allow loot boxes. It's not even a joke, folks. As we previously reported, Belgium has ruled against loot boxes, so devs have had to disable the purchase of loot boxes for Belgian players. 
Well, with NBA 2K19 coming up soon, Publisher 2K sent out a message to its players. In this message, they explain the Belgian loot box situation. They state that they're still in talks with the Belgian Gaming Commission to convince them that their system of loot boxes isn't gambling and states, and I quote, If you agree with us, we recommend that you contact your local government representative to communicate your opinion. Wouldn't it be funny if Belgian players sent in a ton of emails just stating, Good job. Well done, government representatives. So look, here's the thing. I can get behind the sentiment of making in-game purchases for things that add value. If I'm going to spend a couple bucks on a cosmetic skin, that's value. I'm getting something for my money. And as long as those transactions remain entirely optional and not inherently tied into the progression of the game, then I think most people wouldn't be terribly upset by that. But it's kind of cheating when you tie a game's progression system into your money-making system whereby you get to determine how long the grind is and you can pay money to skip it. But hey, I'm not a publisher that makes millions and millions and billions of dollars, so clearly I don't know anything. On to some Path of Exile news. Last week, Path of Exile's new League Delve launched to some compliance, which is pretty much par for the course. When a season launches with new mechanics, there's always going to be some complaints, but overall the reception has been good. There were lots and lots of complaints about the Flare and Dynamite system. There were some comparisons made to Bestiary League and its throwing mechanics with the Nets. Overall, it does seem that the previous League incursion was met with more universally positive feedback. And Bestiary, though, does still seem to be the least well-received of the past three Leagues. All three, though, still haven't positively received, don't get me wrong. We also saw some complaints about those EMPs that knock out your crawler's lights, but always here. GGG has been super responsive. They're quick to respond to feedback, to deploy patches, to work on balance solutions to the problems that players address at the start of a league. I really cannot commend GGG enough on that. Chris Wilson himself, the lead developer, is always out there in the trenches in the Reddit threads, replying to comments and always keeping his civility. Even in the face of harsh criticism, he's receptive to the feedback. And it's this level of personal connection that really makes it obvious how much the devs care about the game and the community. There's a lot of things that Path of Exile does right, but I think what they do right the most, or the most laudable thing that they do right, is really that keeping a pulse on the community. And the results speak for themselves. Throughout the week, a patch came out, nerfed EMP, addressed those complaints. They put up a blog post talking about the systems that they were thinking of changing, that they didn't yet have the patch ready, but they wanted players to know, okay, we've listened, we're receptive, here's what we're working on to fix the issues. So some of those things included Azerite and Delve upgrades being shared amongst League characters rather than having to farm up something, if you have multiple lead characters, having to farm up your your delve on every single character. And they spoke about improvements that they were going to be bringing to the Flare and Dynamite systems. And within a week of the new league launching, patch 3.4.1 came out, addressing all those things. Azerite and delve upgrades are now shared across all your characters in the same league. The base light radius of the flare has been increased. Flares now light instantly, protecting you immediately. And dynamite now destroys fractured walls in a single use. So within less than a week, GGG fixed people's major problems with Delve League. Big kudos. On to some Diablo news. Now there's some allegations that there is a leak that has come out that has confirmed that we are getting a new Diablo game. There's a ton of speculation. There are tons of hints and a huge amount of circumstantial evidence suggesting that yes, there is a new Diablo game coming. But what was noticed was that for the upcoming Diablo comics that were done in partnership with Titan Comics, the listing for those comics, which are supposed to be releasing this fall, the listings have gone up and the description reads, Blizzard's beloved video game classic hack and slashes its way onto the page with legendary writer Marv Wolfman, creator of Blade, and acclaimed artist Peter Kowalski, Bloodborne, The Dark Tower. By the way, The Dark Tower, excellent graphic novel and amazing art. So looking, yep, yeah, 
Yep, I'm hyped. It goes on to say, though, with a new Diablo game confirmed by Blizzard, there's never been a better time to go to hell. And that's the part, that right there, with a new Diablo game confirmed by Blizzard. And we see multiple comic websites with this same exact verbiage listing these upcoming comics for sale. And these listings appear to have gone up as early as August 22nd, which was a few days after the Switch reveal. So the question is, who wrote this? Was it Blizzard? Was it Titan Comics? Was it a third-party marketing team? Or was it simply the writer for one of these websites? Because who wrote this matters in our interpretation. Redditor CX316 says that it looks like a comic trades solicitation, which would mean that it would be Titan Comics that sent this out. And that means it's as close as a source as you can get to Blizzard itself. So what's going on here? With a new game confirmed by Blizzard, can they be talking about the Nintendo Switch port of Diablo 3? Blizzard would not consider that a new game, but would Titan Comics? Did Titan Comics just accidentally leak something, reveal something too soon? The release date is said to be November 7th, which is after BlizzCon, so were they meaning to announce this at BlizzCon? Or was Titan Comics just basing itself on Brandy's video talking about multiple Diablo projects in the works. Also noteworthy is that in the latest issue of Previews Magazine on pages 366 and 367, we see more details about the upcoming comic series. And a lot of the phrasing is similar to the websites, but there is no mention of a new Diablo game. So it begs the question, was there one write-up that was meant to be pre-BlizzCon and another that added that extra line that was meant to go out post-BlizzCon? From within the magazine, we get to take a look at these images here provided to us by Evil Emperor Zerg. Shows us a bit more of the art, the covers that we can expect to come from these comics. In other Diablo news, I got a tip from viewer David Lee, who realized that David Kim is now on the Diablo team and has been as of January 2017. If you look at his LinkedIn profile, it says that he is a lead systems designer on the Diablo team, exploring what's next for the Diablo franchise as of January 2017. Now, a little bit about David Kim. Why is this meaningful? Well, in 2007, David Kim got a job at Blizzard working on the StarCraft II team. He was the core developer on StarCraft II working on game balance, and he was a pro-level StarCraft II player. It's quite rare for devs to be really good at their games, let alone amongst the best in the world. In the StarCraft II beta, he was regarded as the world's best player. And shortly after the game launched, he was rank 1 on the ladder. And for the rest of that year, he maintained a top 100 rank worldwide. Now, in 2017 was when he made his announcement that he would be moving away from the StarCraft II team to work on another project at Blizzard. He did not state what that project was, but now we know. It's been on the Diablo team. So what can we gather from this? We're taking a developer here who is exceptionally skilled at a competitive esports game, who knows how to balance highly competitive games, and we put him on the Diablo team. Could this mean that one of these Diablo projects in the works is something PvP related? Diablo is the only Blizzard franchise that currently does not have an esports angle, yet Blizzard is clearly heavily invested into esports. Could David Kim have been brought on to try to build an esport? out of Diablo. In other Diablo news, rather in other Diablo news from Gamescom that we kind of missed, Redditor Baskinator noticed something interesting from the gameplay footage that has come out of the Diablo 3 Switch demo at Gamescom. He noticed that there was a ring shown in the demo that had stats that were higher than possible. And upon closer inspection, there were many items, in fact, that had stats that were higher than possible. Redditor Digital on Reddit put together these screenshots. We're seeing rare rings with 9.5% crit chance when the max is 6%. We see 959 intelligence when the max on a rare ring is 415. The max on a legendary ring is 500 and the max on an ancient ring is 650. Basically, the rings had stats like they were ancient amulets. And then we see the same thing with the helm. 9% crit chance, which is only possible on an amulet. We see chest armor and boots with 900 intelligence, so the max should be 650 on an ancient. Again, these are amulet stats. And there are other examples of items that have higher stats, and they seem to be emulating the stats of an ancient amulet. So what's going on here? Is this some kind of a bug? Or were these items just created as hacked items just for the demo. They had their stats fudged just to give a good play experience for 
players at Gamescom. Or, as some people believe, is this pointing towards some kind of a new expansion or otherwise new content coming to Diablo 3 that's going to raise these stat limits? Now, personally, I think that this was just done for the press demo. I don't expect this to be a prediction of what's to come. I don't know that I would agree even with the design decision that if there's another expansion to raise the limits, the stat limits on gear. But how do you folks interpret this? And in our last Diablo 3 related rumor, Target put up a listing for Diablo 3 on Switch with a release date of November 2nd. That's the first day of BlizzCon, which runs November 2nd and 3rd. Now what's interesting is that the page has since been taken down, it seems. We didn't know what the release date was for D3 on Switch. All we knew is that it would release in fall of 2018, which puts an upper limit of December 21st. It's kind of suspect that Target puts out this November 2nd release date and then retracts it. I, I mean, I guess if it's a mistake, then retracting it makes sense. But why did they put it up to begin with? It would not be unreasonable to present at BlizzCon. Hey guys, in the summer we revealed Diablo 3 on Switch. Well, as of right now, it's up for sale. You can go buy it. And no, this would not be their big BlizzCon news. Don't worry, guys. And to wrap up our Diablo news, we do have some updates with the job postings. We got three new job postings and two have disappeared. The two job postings that are gone are technical artist and software engineer audio and tools. And the new postings are associate visual effects artist, visual effects artist, which seems to be back. It was gone last week and Associate Software Engineer Audio. Now, what's possible is that what's going on here is maybe these aren't new job postings, maybe these are just reworked job postings. Because again, for instance, Software Engineer Audio and Tools disappears, but is replaced by Associate Software Engineer Audio. Regardless, it's activity. And that's going to wrap up this week's video. But I encourage you to check out last week's video in which we tackle the rumor of a Diablo series coming to Netflix. Furthermore, if you have any stories that you'd like to see me cover in a future video, feel free to post them on the subreddit. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider becoming a Royal Raider on Patreon, where your support is immensely appreciated. We've got a variety of backer rewards, including behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.